Kazam! Blackburn Rovers are on fire. They score four in a six-goal thriller against Oxford United. We'll talk about the match and more on today's show. That's right, Fox back once again with another match review now. Before I get stuck into the actual result, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button to keep your bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. The games are coming thick and fast, and we're already on the build-up to Bristol Rovers at Ewood Park this Saturday. And we'll talk more about that match in another video, in a preview video, probably within 24 hours. But Blackburn Rovers, 4-2 winners against Oxford at the Kazam Stadium. It was a, it was a cracking evening of football. Rovers, they dominated the first 20 odd minutes and they took advantage, full advantage, going 3-0 up. Uh, but Oxford made it uh, a little bit of a tense encounter by getting a goal back, uh, just a uh, stroke at half time. In the second half, Oxford United started to turn the screw a little bit, but Rovers had other plans, and we got a fourth goal before Oxford United made the last few minutes a little bit interesting to make it 4-2. Before I get stuck into the actual statistics of the match, here are the goal scorers. Charlie Mulgrew opened up the scoring on the sixth minute before Marcus Anderson once again on the score sheet uh, to make it 2-0. Then Charlie Mulgrew made it 3-0 from the penalty spot on the 22nd minute before pain for Oxford uh, was a bit of a pain, and he actually bought it to 3-1 at half time. In the second half, Joe Nottle made it 4-1 before Obika scored on the 85th minute uh, to make it a little bit tense in the final couple minutes. So 4-2, the result in the end. As for the statistics itself, the game uh, possession-wise split a little bit evenly. Oh, obviously, Oxford were chasing a good portion of the game, so they did have a lot of possession. As for shots, Oxford uh, won better than us, 11-10. to Shots on target, again, won better than us, 5-4. to Now, when it says shots four on target and we've got four goals... Does that mean we score from each one of our shots on target? That's one for the uh, analytics experts out there. So please let me know in the comments if that is true. As for corners, we dominate that five to three. Fouls were a little bit dirty, um, but who cares? Um, and while we're at it, I'll just put this little fella right here. That's a Swede. You can keep him on my shoulder on uh, my shelf. A little good luck charm. So he's there just to, you know, why not? And here are the starting lineups. Here's Oxford. Uh, what a nightmare this chap had. Uh, Ex Rover, keeper Eastwood, Tindali, Martin, Masunio, Ferreira da Silva, Henry, Ledson, Ruffles, and Rothwell, and up front, Payne and Thomas. Now, if you did check out the preview, that is spot on. I predicted the lineup as it would be, so kudos to me. As for the Rovers, here are those starting lineups for Rovers. I did get this one completely wrong. But uh, David Ryer in gold, Naimbi, Downing, Mulgrew, Derek Williams, Elliot Bennett, Richard Small, Corey Evans back in the lineup, Bradley Dack, Marcus Antonson, and Joe Nottle remained up front, and they repay Tony Mowbray by scoring a goal apiece. Obviously, Charlie Mulgrew taking a lot of the credits for his two goals, and there was a bit of a, there was a little bit of a, a beefy encounter between Antonson and Charlie Mulgrew about who was actually going to take the penalty kick. But obviously, Skipper has as top priority, and he knows how to put the ball in the back of the net in dead ball situations. And he just did that. Uh, so my ratings, here we go. David Raya had a bit of a mare. His distribution on the on the night was absolutely woeful. So a bit, a bit extra train for him. As for the back four, Naimbi had a seven, Downing seven, not, Charlie Mulgrew with a nine, obviously. Derek Williams, seven. Elliot Bennett, seven. Richard Small with an eight. Corey Evans had a six. I didn't think he was that effective. Bradley Dack. Had an eight. He was a thorn in their side, especially in the first half. Marcus Antwerson, always full of running. Joe Nuttall got a seven. He was a little bit average today, but hey, he got the goal and, uh, you know, kudos to him. But Charlie Mulgrew, what a performance for him. Not just the two goals, but he did uh, make a couple of um, game-saving tackles, which kept Rovers in the game. So... Belter result, 4-2. I would not, I, I didn't expect this whatsoever. I was hoping for a point, to be honest. If I was, you know, hand on heart, I, I thought it, a, a draw would be great. But bag in three points, back-to-back -back away wins, back-to-back -back wins, going into the Bristol Rovers game, who are on a bit of a bit of a sloppy path themselves. Maybe, just maybe, we can make it three out of three and build up to the Blackpool game, which will be this time next week. So what about the other players and the fans? What's been happening on social media? First and foremost, Elliot Bennett said, another fantastic away win, tough place to come, but great to get four goals on the road. Superb effort from the traveling fans. Glad we could send you home happy. 
Joe Nottle then said, three points, check, a goal, check. And fantastic support from the travelling fans again, check. Ryan Nimby was in there, another good win today. Three more points, check, great support from the fans, fist pump. And then uh, young Loney Rakim Harper was also in on the uh, Twitter, Twitter action. Big win versus Oxford tonight, another three points and more minutes in the league. Now on to Saturday, and he did a little uh, whatever that is, but yay. Uh, as for the fans itself, let's have a look at some of the Oxford fans. They were particularly quiet last uh, tonight. Uh, terrible performance, lack of movement, limited options, massively lacking in defence. This team has no consistency. And to top it all, they're off to Spain. Incredible. Hashtag sorted out Pep. As for Dylan Prosser, he said, played well. Second half. Three sloppy goals conceded. We move on. Come on, you yellows. As for Rovers fans, Jess Silto said this when we were 3-0 up. She said, 3-0, who'd have thought of it? Bloody love, Mulgrew. As for Becky, she said, great to get six uh, points from two away games. Now on to Ewood Saturday. And Northern Rovers said this, yes, three more points. Brilliant. Now on to Bristol Rovers. Can we make a win again to make this a stupendous week? Nick Sweetman also in on the Twitter action. Up the table, the Rovers go. Then Danny chipped in. Well done, lads. Nice three points. Joe Gilbank, better away than home. I guess so, Joe. I think you got a you got a point there. Our form has been pretty sharp away from home. Uh, when we're at Ewood, we are a little sloppy. I guess maybe some of the empty seats can hinder that, but that's something for uh, Rovers to figure out. Uh, anyway, more moving on. Frank Andrews said on Facebook, another three points, and Shrewsbury lose at Berry. Happy days. Phil Gardner also said. A cracking win away from home against a team who are no mugs. It's imperative we keep the momentum going and beat Bristol Rovers at the weekend. Put an end to this inconsistency and we'll be right up there at the end of the season because we have the team to do it. Up the Rovers, he says. Alex Copeland said, big performance tonight, Rovers. Consistency wins leagues and promotions and that's exactly what we need. He slaps in the old Rovers uh, motto in there. Moving forward, George Nelson said, seven goals in two games, three by Antonsen, scoring three quarters consistently. If we get it right defensively, we'll be a huge force. He does ramble on, but I, uh, I obviously didn't click that button. Uh, moving forward, Liam Walker, he said this a couple of days back, can't wait to smash the chicken lovers on Tuesday night. And then Ian Mayer chips in, Barry, what's the score? Barry, Barry, what's the score? Barry Gibbs, lol. Anyway, moving on. Adam Blackburn, who's got the best surname in the business, just thought I'd put this out there. Saturday, Barry nil, Rovers three. Tuesday, Barry one, Shrewsbury nil. And he is a Rovers fan. Uh, and George Nelson again. He gets in there twice for some reason, so we will ignore that one. I don't do this very often, but uh, I thought I'd chuck in one of my own tweets there. But uh, David Dunn. I uh, had a little comment after the match and he said, good result for the Rovers or something along those lines. So then I chipped in and I said, hey, uh, not good, Dunny boy. That was great. And I sent a gif of the old Tommy the Tiger or whatever it is from the Frosties packet. And then he did this. He blooming liked it, didn't he? David Dunn liked the stinking tweet. So we're besties now, me and Dunny boy. We go way back, uh, way back to that tweet. So we're tight. Um, but yeah, made my day. In fact, the whole day made my day. The day's been great. Anyway, let's move forward and take a look at the results elsewhere. Some tweets might have given you some indication of what uh, some of the results uh, of the night. Berry did, in fact, beat tabletop of Shrewsbury, but Shrewsbury still remain on top by one point against uh, over Wigan, who managed to put have a decent result themselves. Where is it? I cannot see it. Where it is? 3-0 against Doncaster. Who else in there? Bristol Rovers were not in action. They were probably in the training ground preparing for this weekend's game. Uh, strugglers Plymouth pulled off a 2-0 victory against fellow strugglers Northampton. Uh, Gary Bowyer's Blackpool could only master a draw against Gillingham. We play them on Tuesday. And Walsall upset the odds a little bit against Fleetwood Town. 4-2 winners. In fact, Fleetwood seemed to be nosediving towards the middle of the table. And Bradford City also stumbled to a feat, uh, losing at home to Scunthorpe. Uh, Scunthorpe now third place. Rovers in sixth. Uh, Three-point cushion above Peterborough. But we're looking upwards, fellas. We're looking up. And uh, those top two or three spots uh, win on uh, on Saturday. We could go as high as fourth. Well, that's a lot, folks. But before I go, make sure you head over to the BRFCS forum. It's a cracking forum. An opportunity for you to meet up with fellow Blackburn Rovers fans from around the world and talk about the games, especially ones like today.
And while I'm at it, make sure you go to my YouTube channel and check that out. And make sure you hit the subscribe button and keep your bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. The games are coming thick and fast. I'm already working on the next one. Uh, never ending at the moment. Never ending. But hey, I love it. If, they, if the results are like this, I love it. If they're uh, a defeat, then I hate them. I hate them. But right now, I love them. I love them. So, uh, yeah, that's all I got for you. Great result. Uh, morale boost in a couple of days. Uh, to think we got six out of six so far. Can we make it nine points out of nine against strugglers Bristol Rovers at Ewood Park? It would be a beautiful tonic uh, to end the week. A lot of games coming up, so it's, it's going to be mad. Hopefully Mowbray's uh, going to rotate some players a little bit, get, keep them fresh, keep them on the toes. But right now, oh wait, wait, I forgot something. Yeah, these are just some nuts. Just some nuts I found. Uh, they're going to go on the shelf with the Swede later. But I'll just put them over here for now. Just some nuts and a Swede. Uh, but yeah, until next time, I've got to wrap it up. I've got to move on to the next video. Till next time, thanks for watching. Thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll get you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now.